Hello. This is a little uh, video about how to use Excel to do a straightforward task like keeping track of your savings and maybe plot it on a little graph and set yourself a target and just see if you're on target just from looking at the graph. Um, this is Excel 2007. The method is pretty much exactly the same in uh, 2010 and 2013. They've shuffled things around a bit but it's the same really. Um, functionality is almost the same, the places you click on are almost the same. So let's start. We'll call it savings and we're going to start in the past and we're going to assume that you've got a few data points available in the past like you've saved for a month or two at least already. I'm going to go way back so let's see April 2010, let's say. Excel converts that into a date, you'll see that's in UK English format. If you're in a different country, your format may be different, but it's a date. Excel understands it. Year 2010. Now to populate all these rows, you don't have to type them all in. Excel understands. You see the little black box in the corner there. You click on the little you move the cursor to it so you've got a little black plus and then you hold down the left button and you can drag it along and you can see what it's going to put in there on that little flag. So let's just drag along and get a few years worth of data. Um, we'll go up to April, March 2017 shall we? That's Maybe that's enough. You might want to go further into the future. Tap the home key, let go of the button and then tap the home key to bring yourself back to the beginning of the row there. And then you want your balance, the amount you've got in savings. I will start with a hundred and okay, I'm gonna put in a load. Um let me just pause the video a moment while I put put some numbers in there. Hold on. Okay, I've put in a load of figures now up to April twenty fourteen, say. Tap the home key to get back. And we started with a hundred pounds <coughs> and I've just put in a load. Now the next thing to do is to plot them on a graph. So let's see how we do that. Click somewhere, go to insert, and under charts, we pick a simple line chart. You can, you can try other types at your leisure, but you'll get unpredictable results sometimes. But um, here's the line chart. Whoosh, and uh, let's just make it nice and big so we can see it. Okay, so nice and blank, so we have to put some data in it. For that we select data. And the data range that we want is our money. And you don't just include the money you've already put in, you include all the future values that you haven't put in yet as well. for when you're rich and have got loads of savings. There we go. Whoosh. That's in. And we better give it a name. I'll call it savings. Okay. And well let's just okay that and we can have a look at the chart that it's drawn. Whoosh. There it is. Okay. What's wrong with it is these numbers along the bottom don't make sense. Um, you need to tell it to use the dates. So this is the horizontal axis as it's called. You edit and you tell it the range of numbers you want here. It's April, oh wait, so you tell it you want these labels across the bottom. And OK, and you can see it's put them in just like that. Straightforward. Now that is the minimum you need to do to be able to chart your savings. Um, I see you've been raising your account every Christmas. A bit naughty, but there you go. Life uh, life is like that, isn't it? Um, supposing you want to set yourself a target for where you want to be um, in the future, and you want to know if you're 
on target. It looks from the state of this curve, it looks like you are on target, but let's put a target in as well. Now that will start off at £100, but you can't just stick the next figure here and expect it to draw a line. XL wants to have an x axis and a y axis, so I have to put the actual target figure up at the end here, all the way up at the end. Let's suppose your target is £6,000 or whatever the currency is. Okay, in that date. So we have to add a second curve to this. We go to the um, Design tab and we choose Select Data. Having clicked on the graph, we choose Select Data. And we have to add another line. This, this is called Target. And we select our values. Click the little button here, and it's the 100 that we've just put in as the target, and all the way across to include the other value. Way, way off in the future. Okay, boof. And oh, we have to tell it about the x axis as well, because it doesn't know. So, um, oops, let's choose the labels. These are just names, basically. That's what they're called, labels. They're dates to us, but as far as Excel is concerned, it's just a, a label. And OK. And OK, you're way out of it. <coughs> and where is it? It's changed the scale on the graph, so it must be in here, but we can't see it. Let's go back to select data. It's all looking OK, <coughs> as far as one can tell from these cryptic numbers. But what's this? Hidden and empty cells. It's showing the empty cells as gaps, so probably what we have is a dot here, and a dot up here somewhere, and that's it. So connect the data points with a line. There it is. And you can see we're on target. Marvellous. There's another thing you can do in the Layout tab. If you want to, you can have Excel automatically plot a trend line. Um, a straight line trend uh, based on the saving series. That's drawn that line, but it actually almost matches our target. It's it's based on the average of all these data points. Um, get rid of it. You can try different types, um, but the exponential one you're unlikely to be able to keep up with an exponential curve, to be honest, and it's not very realistic. Probably the most realistic one is either a straight, simple straight trend line or um, polynomial, which is based on a so kind of an equation, it tries to match roughly the curvature of your line over time. And it's kind of t suggesting that maybe you've been raiding your savings a little bit too much and there's a tendency for it to underperform if you're not careful. I find that one the most useful kind of trend line. The straight line shows that so far you're dead on target, but when you actually look at the way, the frequency with which, which you're raiding those um, savings every now and then. You might, if you keep that up, you will go below and you'll tend in this direction instead. So it's a little, little warning for you. But that's basically what you have to do. Um, I hope that's been useful. Um, and now you can go away and plot your basic savings chart. Bye for now.